Is this uh, is the seat taken? Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, it's coming down. I can barely see. Yeah, I, I like it too. I think that uh, being out in the weather uh, gives time more form. You know what I mean? You know, uh, it's like uh, more form. You know, like uh, it's sound for one. Um, you can hear the rain hitting everything out there, and uh, visual for another. Like you look up at a, uh, a light in the distance, and you can kind of see a halo, almost a globe sometimes, on the street lights over there. A globe of light um, filled with shimmering raindrops. So um, I think that it makes me more aware of time. And uh, oh, hi, uh, Steel Reserve. Yeah, that's cool. No, no, I don't need one. Appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, anyway, I like the rain essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's the other thing too about uh, getting a chance to get away from work um, and having like a moment to stop on your way home, get a beer, have the kind of transition, yeah, it's almost like, uh, I guess, uh, I imagine doing like a job like, uh, like Dan the Man, you know, like you, you, like you work at like a mine quarry, and like if you could somehow stop and take a shower and wash the dust of the mines off you, um, oh, thanks, <laughs> cheers. I like that sound. To you. Uh, thanks for letting me have the good seat. Yeah, I don't. I don't often have them. Um, I'm more of a Mickey's fan, but they don't. They don't serve Mickey's here. I think, uh, yeah, that if you had more time away from work, uh, I, I bet you uh, there'd be a more productive workforce. Imagine a workforce that uh, uh, got to take uh, leaves, like uh, work two months, take one month off. So, I know, actually, I knew a miner that, that did that, actually, uh, but they had to work on the facility uh, nonstop. You didn't need to get away at all. Um, so, but I think that would be nice for us. That was carried out throughout the whole uh, work system. And I know, like a lot of different people say, like you know, well, the, uh, the, our pro productivity, you know, being a productive nation, let's say, makes us stronger. Um, I don't really see that playing out playing out too much in practice. I think nations with an epic amount of natural resources do well, but like that's just like showing up, finding out you got a ton of money in the bank, and, and then saying like, well, you know, I did that. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Screw work. Because if you're not going to get uh, leaves of absence, you have to get uh, a momentary leave of your senses uh, now and again. Yeah. I don't talk much either. I, I kind of think that... Uh, I mean, sometimes I can go on and on, but I can exhaust uh, what I want to say. I think my rule of thumb is uh, if I want to say something, it's because I want to say something I feel is true. Um, and if nothing comes to mind, well then, sitting there quietly waiting for something else to come along uh, seems like a good thing. Yeah. Not much. I was able to get away uh, to the coast recently. I really love uh, the ocean. It, uh, I think I love uh, the epic nature. It's like, like I love free things, right? I love like you know going for walks in the forest and 
uh, things that require little investment like bike rides. And then so you uh, invest in a, a vehicle, or you can even take uh, public transportation to the coast from where I live and uh, spend the afternoon uh, watching, no, At the transition from land to water, it's, it never gets old. Yeah, I, know, I normally come alone. I do a lot by myself. Um, I think that uh, I think that that throughout history, that uh, there's a lot of people that uh, have displayed a huge amount of uh, uh, introverted behavior, and I think it's a it's a deeply misunderstood uh, personality trait. Uh, and uh, I can also think of a lot of introverts. Uh, especially artists um, that have uh, left their mark on the world, and quite a significant art, uh, mark. So, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't, I'm not ashamed to be a uh, bit of a hermit uh, now and again. I certainly don't mind uh, sitting down next to somebody and chatting uh, now and again. In fact, sometimes I think experiences can't really be fully realized until you uh, tell them to somebody else. I think sometimes uh, it gives a memory more reality. Mem memories diminish t over time. And, uh, you know, people that like have their favorite stories. I always, I never interrupt somebody who tells me his favorite story again because I see it as a way to reinforce uh, the memory, make the memory more real, and also uh, relive the past, which uh, reliving a pleasant uh, time of the past, uh, I wish that was uh, something that occurred more often, you know? It seems like I'm always dredging up memories in the past that upset me, and I don't, I don't see the value necessarily, as long as, as long as I've learned my lesson. Yeah, it is a nice night. It's another good thing about uh, having people all be different. Like uh, this pouring down rain just has us out here on the patio, and everyone else stays inside in the bar. And so, uh, liking this nature, liking this rain, uh, provides uh, the two of us with a little bit more uh, seclusion. A couple of introverts have gone out uh, to a uh, gathering place of humanity and then they go sit in the rain to, uh, to be on the periphery. <laughs> oh. Driving here was kind of hairy. It's weird how uh, people are affected by being on the road. You can't, I mean, the, the impact of being in a vehicle. And also, I don't know if we fully acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, one of the leading causes of death in the United States, uh, maybe around the world, um, is uh, automobiles. So I, I came here tonight on the scooter, and uh, sometimes I think I should be driving a, a, a U-Haul. Something that could take an epic amount of uh, impact. It's actually not a bad idea. You think about like the drawback in gas mileage, but think of it as life insurance. In fact, I went... When I went to I went to Burning Man, 
and uh, there were people uh, building uh, Mad Max vehicles with big sheet metal in front and the back and uh, screens across the glass and whatnot. And I thought, uh, where can I go get my van modded? I need a Mad Max mod on my van. Minivan of death. Devil horns! Oh, yeah. I got some malt liquors kicking in. You know when I'm flashing the devil horns, things are getting out of hand. No, I don't normally cuss, actually. I, I mean, a couple of these and, you know, I'll be dropping some, uh, some, some foul language, I assure you. No. I, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a happy drunk. I, I think that, uh, maybe, I think my, like, my basic drive is to be calm. Um, and I think, I think that, uh, you know, striving to be happy is cool, and it's going to happen, but uh, it can't be maintained. And so a lack of it, as it comes and goes, um, every time you're not happy, you'll feel disappointment. Um, but uh, calm can be maintained, and uh, the times you leave calm, a lot of those times it's going to be actually a, uh, a wonderful thing, you know. So the only disappointment is uh, you know, heading from calm into misery. And uh, then you only have one step to come back from misery into calmness. You don't have to. You don't expect to go all the way into uh, to joy. Cheers. Oh, I think that the doors, you just have to, here, hold on a second, I'll give you a hand. Maybe that's why nobody's out here, is they can't figure out how to open the door. It's really dumping now. It's like uh, riding a jet ski coming here on the scooter. Yeah, I, actually, exactly. It's the opposite of a U-Haul. Um, I guess the scooter is uh, anti-life insurance. But the idea that it gets uh, uh, 80 miles to a gallon and um, insurance for, I could pay for a year's worth of insurance, it's like $60 or less. It's cheap. Um, it's just, uh, it's like getting a raise at work. It really is. And it is enjoyable. It, it turns, uh, uh, no, not tonight. Tonight's commute was uh, kind of crazy, but it could turn an average commute uh, to a bit of a joy. And sometimes I think going slower is better. Yeah, sometimes I wear one of those uh, bright orange safety vests, those hunter vests, to make myself more visible, but I think that uh, basically I just cross my fingers and hope for the best. Pretty much, uh, pretty much that could be tattooed on me. Actually, uh, speaking of uh, getting tattoos, I mean, let me tell you this, uh, this kind of dream I had. Um, the dream was uh, I was working with uh, a bunch of marine biologists and uh, we were getting to the bottom of how like uh, an octopus, let's say, uh, their eyesight, they see black and white essentially. Uh, they have limited vision. So how is it that uh, they can change color and the color can match their environment uh, so well? Like really intricate uh, camouflage patterns. So what the, uh, oh, no, I'm good. I'll just have this one. I'll close out. Thanks. Um, oh, so uh, one of the largest organs of your body is your skin. Uh, it turns out the uh, octopus' organs, the skin, is actually the, the organ responsible for perceiving the colors around it and then replicating the colors on itself. And so it's, it's strange that this... Uh, this organ, this autonomic organ, um, uh, 
it would also it responds to uh, the mental stimulus of its surroundings as well. It's more likely to take on a camouflage pattern um, in a threat situation or a place where it's concerned um, and completely abandons the camouflage pattern with passion. Um, as squids turn bright colors, uh, uh, squids, uh, octopus turn bright colors uh, when they're angry or they're attacking or they're hunting or they're passionate. Um, and so in the dream, we developed this into a, uh, a kind of organ that, would, could, be, that could be attached uh, to the human body. And uh, the human body would, uh, it would represent on its skin uh, the chemical makeup of its blood uh, over a period of several months. Um, so by looking at somebody, um, the colors and the patterns on their entire body uh, you could get a good idea of what their last couple months have been like in their life. Uh, really minutely, if the more you get, the more used to get to reading it. Uh, thanks. No, I don't need a change. Have, have a good night. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. So, essentially, it was. Like, remove everything anyone ever says about things, right? Like, if you could look at them and kind of get an idea of what their last couple months are like, it's, you get to know them in a way that, uh, um, kind of talking to them is never going to never gonna cut it. You know, like, we both say work sucks. But do I know how bad it is for you? Do I know how long it's been since you've had time off? Or vice versa, when my last vacation was? How stressed I am about it? Um. You know, maybe it's just something I say, oh yeah, you know, work. But maybe it's really the top of my mind and the top of my emotions. You can see it on my skin. Uh, and so I saw this uh, in the dream as an innovation to truth. Uh, it, would, uh, it would make us all closer together. We would all understand one another in a way that uh, we've never understood one, one another before. Um, I thought it was a way towards peace. Um, you would, you could see you would see almost immediately when you were upsetting somebody, um, and that upsetting thing uh, would upset you, or you would have some sort of uh, disjointed response to others' emotions that wouldn't appear to be natural, and that would make you shunned by everybody around you. I thought it would I thought it would be it would make peace worldwide peace. But so I instituted I instituted this product. Tons of people did it, and almost immediately a gigantic uh, entity of companies uh, were, was created, sprung up from the earth, as if they were waiting for me to provide chemicals that you could take that would change the color of your skin, so that you would appear confident. You could appear that like for the last two months, I've been nothing but in control. And, uh, and powerful, and, uh, you know, all the traits that we admire, um, or don't admire, but all the traits that bring about success. You know, we hate people that are selfish, but we admire the fact that someone can be so selfish that they live uh, up in those, the very top houses up there, they're like two million dollar houses. Um, we're like, oh, I'd like to live like that. Um, well, they're not, they're not necessarily the kindest of people. Uh, maybe they are, but in business, maybe they're not. And ordinarily, that was showing your skin. But they take, you know, everyone starts taking these drugs. You have to. To get your skin to show what you wanted people to know. So we went right back to lying to each other. Except we were more colorful. Oh, well, alright, that's it for me. One's good enough on the drive home. Oh yeah, I'm, I'll be safe. Uh, you have a good night, and uh, it was good talking to you. I, I had a good time. Oh, if I see you, if I see you again, let's sit together and uh, be hermits to one another. And, oh, thanks. Yeah. All right. Good night. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. All right. Thanks. All right. Good night.